Okay, so let's go through the femoral slump test now. So if we think about the femoral nerve, it comes off your L2 to L4 anteriorly and the branches go in between your psoas and your iliacus. They then go underneath your inguinal ligament and then they branch into a medial and intermediate uh, branch from there. They communicate with your saphenous nerve further down. The position that you're going to put this athlete in to start with is a position of lumbar flexion, thoracic flexion and cervical flexion. So you've got that pre-tensioned neural position. And then what we're going to do is add hip extension. So we're taking them from a hip flexed position towards neutral or into extension, depending on their range. And we're also adding that knee flexion from there. So if the knee is in pretty good condition, what we'll try and do is pre-tension that distally, put the foot into plantar flexion and just lock that into your inner leg. From there, I'm monitoring what's happening at the lumbar spine, putting her into a neutral position here. And then what I'm doing is taking them back until I feel some sort of give. Now, what can happen is you end up with movement from here. So if you get the athlete to hold on to that knee, that will stabilize that. You can use one hand, two hands, whatever you want from there. That will keep them stable. And then you'll be a bit more accurate with your testing. So you're taking it back until you feel some sort of resistance, as I feel here. And then what I'm doing is trying to differentiate, is that hip flexor or rec frem tightness, or is that neural? So from that position to offload neurally, what I can do is ask the athlete to extend their head. Does that change any of the symptoms down here? If it does, that is potentially a neural related issue. And if it gets worse as they drop back into a cervical flexion position, that's gonna add some additional tension through that neural system. The other way that I can do it is stabilize them here and take off the amount of plantar flexion that they have at the foot. And again, does that change any of the tightness, any pins and needles, any sensory changes that are happening along the line of that femoral nerve? Now, if their knee isn't able to get into end of range knee flexion here, what I can quite easily do is just drop them onto the other leg. So again, stabilize around that lumbar pelvic region, take them into extension, you'll probably get more range because you have less tension on that rec firm and get them to do exactly the same thing when they feel that resistance. Again, ask them to cervical extend. From there, does that change the symptoms? If it does and it reduces, that is more likely to be neural than it is uh, a muscular resistance from there. And then just drop back into a neck flexion position and does that bring the symptoms back on again? Again, we don't wanna leave them in that position too long because that can be a bit provocative. And then the other two things that you can test in this position is the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve and also the obturator nerve, which is more groiny. We would do exactly the same thing in terms of the wind up, but what you might decide to do is preload that for the obturator nerve into that position. So taking them into abduction and then take them back into extension. Does that affect the range? Does that reproduce any of the symptoms in that groin? And the other way around, what you can do is drop down into a deduction and then take them back into extension. So that is then more that lateral femoral cutaneous nerve that's there. Again, you might want to do your similar little differentials, either proximally or distally.